Hello everybody, this is Niklas Hoschenbeet and welcome to the Premium Coaching live show here on Chess24. And as always, what is the show about? I'm going to analyze games of Premium members who have sent in their games through our analysis and database feature here on Chess24, or analysis and training feature it's called, I think. No, it's called database analysis and coaching feature. And I'm going to take a look give some hopefully helpful tips and just point out what I can tell, what I can see from my perspective, um, having played this game for a number of years already. So let's get right to it. Let's do the close up. And my first game I have today is by Chess Castle. But before we begin, as always, of course, I need to verify that you can here and see me. Um, so let me just do this real quick. Because well, that would be great. Yeah, I think it should be all right. M. Hansen saying it's all good. Awesome. Let's get started with the game by Chess Castle who was playing against a low rated opponent and he had too much respect because they have 300 points more. Yeah, this is of course a factor if you play against low rated players that this psychology has an impact that your opponent is scared because you have more rating points. But really what I like to say, everybody can beat everybody more or less of course. And it's just the rating difference is pretty much just you can see it as a probability over a course of maybe 10 games. So let's say 100 games, uh, you'll win more games if you have more rating. But one game, anything can happen, really. All right, let's get into it. D4, D5, C4, Knight of 6, which is already an inaccuracy. Actually, I used to do this back in the day when I just learned chess. I was playing against my dad and we always pretty much started out like that. Uh, and then at some point somebody told us, Knight of six is not smart here because white can take on d5 and you give up the center for black, right? Knight takes d5, e4, and white already has a nice center here. So, and this is what chess castle, what you could have done here as well. Uh, just taking on d5 and play, instead of playing knight f3. Because, yeah, even if black takes with the queen, just knight c3, and then followed by e4, and white just already has a nice edge. So knight f3, of course, the normal move, black could now transpose with e6 or c6, but play bishop f5. And still here, I would say c takes d5 looks very sensible. But instead, knight, now bishop f4, okay. Yeah, also knight c3 looks interesting, or queen b3. But okay, bishop f4, knight c6, knight c3 now. And now knight b4, and this is very ambitious by your opponent, but queen a4 and you're saying, here I felt confident, I crushed him with some precise moves. All right, queen a4 check, forcing back the knight, obviously, because otherwise it's going to be lost. And now e3, just developing. But here, I think you can also play knight b5 already. This looks like a very strong move because black is struggling to defend this pawn on c7, which is attacked by a bishop and a knight. And what can black do? Rook c8, a promise that, well, I wanted to say knight takes a7, but I had to stop myself, unfortunately, because here after rook a8, uh, maybe this actually does work, because there's still knight takes c6, rook takes a4, knight takes d8, and this looks like a healthy extra pawn already here. Um, move like b3 now or knight e5 looks great. Great advantage already for white. So knight b5 looked like a good move here. But also e3, of course, you have gained some momentum um, with this queen move. So your position is, is good anyways, e6. All right, now knight e5. That makes sense. Once again, one can also look at knight b5, but now I think black could at least defend 
decently here we're playing bishop d6. So knight e5 I like, bishop e7. So black's just ignoring that, but I guess he could not do much about the threat of knight takes c6 anyway. So bishop e7, knight takes c6, pawn takes, queen takes, knight d7, and yeah, you're just picking up some pawns here. e takes d5, knight takes d5, Maybe, well, I'm thinking if bishop takes c7 was also pretty good, but in this case, you know, you're up, what, two pawns already, and here you're up three pawns, so it doesn't really matter. But just for, just for the protocol, here, bishop takes c7 might be even stronger, I was about to say, but then... Once again, I might need to correct myself because I want to go here and then pick up another exchange on f8, but black can still pin the queen, so yeah, it doesn't quite work. So I guess queen takes c7, yeah, up three pawns. Uh, that's it. Queen takes c7, you're saying, I think he already resigned in his head. Well, that's understandable. And oh yeah, he blundered a, a piece here, which you exploited. Very nice. Um... Yeah, I mean, what can I say? It's just completely winning. So, uh, let's keep going. Check, takes, knight of six. Okay, I'm in here. Blundered another piece and game over, win. Congratulations. I mean, honestly, I cannot point out much here. Uh, this was a 16 move game, apart from the opening, where I would say, okay, take on d5 would have given you a nice game already after move two. And then maybe knight b5, but also e3 I, I quite liked. So not much I can say here. And maybe for all the other people who are thinking about sending in a game, just some, some tips. Of course, I can give you much more advice if it's, well, for one, a little bit longer and for the other, if you lost or you made some mistakes. Because here, what can I say? Of course, uh, nice crushing game, but after all, I cannot give much advice. So for all of you guys who want to send in the game, um, even though, of course, to some degree, we don't want to send in losing games because we also um, want to show what we what we are able to accomplish on the board, but in terms of the biggest training effect, games that are lost just have so much more in general or usually um, to, to have this value of learning from them, right? So for all you guys, um, that's my stand on that. So let's go to the next game. And Patrick is saying black played very bad. Well, yeah, you could say so. This game is by Corsu, one, two, three, and he was playing with the white pieces. So let's see. C4, knight C6, knight C3, the English opening, G6. And here G3, I think here it's quite possible to go no, hold on. No, no, g3 is fine, yeah. Uh, if d4, black takes and plays bishop g7, no, that's fine for black. And actually I covered this myself in my repertoire uh, series here against the English. Miktal, don't worry, we will get to your game today. Um, this is a one and a half hour show, so we have some time and I'm going to cover a bunch of games, I'm pretty sure. So we'll get to your game. Yeah, Nachos is pointing on e3 first is another line, actually one of the most popular lines right now against the system on knight of six, d4 takes, takes. And this might be one of the critical lines, even though objectively speaking, I think it's equal, but 
From a practical point of view, there are some lines where white can press and try. So bishop g7, bishop g2, knight f6. So this is all very symmetrical, obviously. Castle and yeah, I think here white can also play with d4. Maybe a slightly more ambitious thing to go d3, but all right, d6, a3, rook b8, rook b1, knight d7. You give a line here with a6, continuing the symmetry. symmetry. Um, yeah, it's all pretty close to equality, obviously. Knight d7, all right, bishop d2, and knight de5. Knight takes, all right. Knight takes and then b4. Yeah, I mean, that all makes sense to me. Now black took, takes, takes, and looks like you have achieved a nice advantage here if white can just get b4, and especially if black takes, because now you also have some more options to play in the center. This is already a nice advantage um, for white here. Bishop d7 b5 yeah i do like b5 i think um opening up this threat of rook a1 putting some pressure on the a6 pawn and black goes a6 a7 pawn excuse me goes a6 now himself and just queen c2 yeah i like all of this i mean just play natural moves and if black now takes just knight takes b5 and it's just effortless Nice play for white, nice little edge. All right, so e6 was played. And now you took on a6 and take some concrete measures. Yeah, I think I like that too. Honestly, you get the you get the b file, the bishop is shining on g2. This all looks very sensible. Queen d8 back. Now queen a2. Yeah, I have not much to add here. This all looks pretty nice for white. Um, a5, now knight b5, of course, hopping in there and winning the pawn on a5. Queen takes a5, all right. Bishop takes a5, just queen a8, maybe. Yeah, there's queen a8, which is annoying. There's an annoying pin, and now you can't take on c6 because of knight takes c6, hitting this bishop once again, actually being in trouble here because you cannot protect the bishop rook a1. The square is covered by the bishop on g7. All right, so queen takes a5, queen takes a5, bishop takes, bishop takes g2, king takes. So we have reached this end game, which is a pawn up pawn up for white and probably close to winning simply uh, rook a8 was played and now bishop e1 um, and you're saying the reason why I played this passive bishop e1 is because I was in deep time trouble the time control was 90 minutes plus 36 seconds 30 seconds per move at about 20 seconds on the clock. So then the question is, of course, where did you spend all that time? Um, I think you really might want to work on your time management um, because this was not a very difficult game up to this point. Um, the opening phase, I, I'm thinking that you were probably familiar with it up to around here, and you made a comment here about a6. So you could make those moves pretty quickly. And then you spent about, um, well, 80 minutes, 90 minutes more or less on the next uh, 15 moves here, which is too much, especially, well, of course, I don't have to tell you this, it's too much if you're ending up with 20 seconds on the clock, um, especially considering though that those moves were not particularly difficult to make. So my tip um, for people who get into time trouble often, I don't know if this applies to you, but all for all the other watchers, uh, watchers, viewers, um, for one, track your time usage. 
So during the game, you're actually allowed to write this down on your uh, score sheet, how much time you're using per move. This is just already helping because it's making you more aware and that you want to change that. It's just bringing it into your consciousness that you want to play a little bit quicker and avoid getting into time trouble. So this is the first tip, uh, writing it down. And then second tip is use the time when your opponent is thinking. So don't walk around, uh, don't dream, fantasize about how you're going to win or anything like that, but sit down, focus on a position and concentrate and try to predict your opponent's move and then what you're going to do next or think about general plans, um, but use that time especially if you get into time trouble because then you really want to make use of it. And there's some other things you can do, like in some positions um, you can play moves rather quickly because they're just obvious moves, right? Uh, let's say, for example, here after taking on b8, of course, rook b1 can be played very quickly, occupying the open file, right? And then here, queen a2 is also moved, doesn't need that much thought, maybe a little bit, but you can see the pawn, it's not, it's not easy to defend the pawn, queen is placed better, and then here, knight b5, also quick move, hitting this pawn a5, hitting a pawn on d6, right? So some moves you just don't need to spend a lot of time, because you want to have the time when it matters, when, you, when it's about converting the advantage, when you when you need to play precisely. Of course, this end game is not that um, challenging in terms of uh, calculation and stuff going on, but still uh, you want to be able to convert. And winning a one position is, is difficult to do. So you need to be aware and you need to have enough time. All right. So, replay bishop e1, this, yeah, this is, just looks passive. What is the bishop doing there, right? You could put the bishop on c3. You can also put it on c7 to hit um, the, the pawn on d6 again when I'm thinking black has to play d5. There's just no other move. And now, um, yeah, now the question is, how do I want to proceed? I could push by going c5 and having a pass pawn. Um, I could also take and black would have another weakness on d5. So two pleasant options really for white here. Uh, both, I think, uh, giving excellent winning chances. Um, what would I choose here? I don't really like c5 that much because black can just put the knight on c6 and controls, blocks his pawn pretty nicely right now. So, and this knight, well, it could go to d6. Yeah, I mean, this might also be pretty good, in fact, but needs to be carefully considered. Maybe black can go something like bishop d4 here. And yeah, I'm not that sure. Um, but taking on d5 looks great. Now we just have to get the pieces back in order somehow. Um, maybe... Well, the problem with knight c3 is that it might run into knight takes d3 right now. I mean, one could do this, but the thing is here, that you want to keep as many pawns on the board as possible. As a general rule of thumb, I like to like to give this rule of thumb because very practical and very common is that if you're up material, you want to exchange pieces. So knights, bishop, rooks, and so on. But if you're down material, you want to exchange pawns. So in this case, we would help black because with every exchange pawn, winning material, winning potential disappears from the board. So, um, this might not be optimal, especially because also we're exchanging this weakness, this isolated pawn on d5. Um, you know, another move that I would look at is just taking this off and then going d4, um, pushing the bishop back, now going e3, 
and then just playing knight c3, rook b5, and I think you're just going to win this pawn. It's on a light square, um, and it's just doomed. What can black do? Uh, maybe even here, concretely, knight c7 works already, because, yeah. Yeah, something along these lines looks very good. Here, rook c8, knight takes d5, bishop takes d4, knight e7. And if rook d8 now, just protect this pawn, super safe. And uh, rook b5 is the threat if rook d7, all right, knight b5, go knight c3, go rook b5, and game over, you win this pawn, you're up two pawns, connected pawns, uh, pawns and it's, it's gone. Um, so bishop c7 looks good. Um, oh, bishop b4 also looks good, actually. Yeah, you, you now we spend so much time talking about bishop c7, but maybe bishop b4 is just better even, because now this also seems to force d5, and um, yeah, now we have the same thing, but here you also have this additional move, knight c7, which is nice, hitting both rook and um, pawn, so black has to go rook d8, and now you can go bishop e7, and already a black position falls apart. You win the pawn on d5. Rook d7, rook b8, just wins. Um, blue cars asking, can the king defend? Probably you meant in the other position, in this one around here, uh, but I think the the king would be too far away. You want to put the king on d6 or something like that, but it just takes too long. But we just figured out this bishop b4 is so much easier. And um, this is just a matter of canon moves. Just look at all the pot potential moves. Bishop b4, bishop c3. Of course, many tempting options. I mean, even bishop c3, because here, if black defends this pawn, what can he even do? A rook d8 wouldn't work, because I can still take, and I always have these ideas against uh, the king. And um, bishop f8 looks not good either. I mean, I can take an e5. I can play a move like c5 here. Uh, so here probably black also needs to play d5. And actually, it's once again the same story. I can just, just go knight c7. Um, okay, rook d8. Here I don't have a immediate blow, though, because knight takes d5 doesn't work. But maybe rook b5 now. This is just all very good. But I think bishop b4 I like best. All right, uh, enough. Um, bishop e1, I, I understand you want to be careful. And, but I think also here maybe what played into this is the rating difference. Your opponent was 500 rating points above you and you just want to not blunder anything. So have more confidence. Um, believe in yourself, even if you're down to 20 seconds doesn't matter, you can still play a natural move like bishop c3, you're not going to blunder anything. Uh, if rook a2 in the worst case, you can go king f1, but you can also just take on d6. So have some more confidence and um, that would help. Rook b8. And here probably still bishop b4 looks good. But okay, you exchange a pair of rooks. You just, I think you just want to play it safe here and understand with little time, uh, makes sense. But um, yeah, you make your life harder in the process, right? You still, you're still up a pawn, still excellent winning chance and probably objectively winning, but you make it a little bit more difficult for yourself. All right. Knight c3, takes, takes, knight c6, and bishop c3, yeah, I, I like this move, because, yeah, exchanging bishops would definitely make your task easier. General, another rule of thumb is knight in games are like pawn in games, so this is not always true, but in many cases it's, it's very similar, and if you're up a pawn, a healthy pawn like here, in a knight in game, you have excellent chance to convert. So black goes bishop f8, knight d2, d5. All right. Takes, takes, knight b3, bishop d6. 
And I feel like it would be time to bring the king a little bit closer, honestly. Um, go king f3 or something like that. You're playing f4 here. f4... Uh, a move I'll be careful with. You know, pawn moves you can never take back. So you always want to think twice before moving your pawn. And here especially black can fix his pawn on a on a dark square, the same square as your bishop. And you probably heard this before, it's not optimal. Of course, with your extra pawn, you're still maintaining great winning chance, but I'm not that fond of f4. Um, either king f3 or knight d4 looks also nice here because also all the bishop endgames are just winning and um, this knight is quite well placed on on c6 it seems to me so it would make sense to push it away yeah knight knight d4 or maybe even knight a5 or just get the king a little bit closer those would be my preferred options here f4 king f8 king f3 okay now the king is coming should I have played e4 or should I put pressure on the weak pawn on d5 like my opponent said and your opponent's right like I said earlier don't exchange um, pawns because well <laughs> the less pawns you have then it doesn't matter that much anymore that you're up a pawn and MGTOW is also pointing it out in the chat um, so e4 is not a move you want to make unless concretely it's winning for you king e7 so yeah here you're playing e4 and that's a mistake um, because it makes the black defensive task much easier he has gotten rid of this pawn uh, this weak pawn and this helps tremendously so knight d4 again I would say here I would be a good try and probably black has to try the the yeah here though f5 now not sure how good are the winning chances here for white this might be tough in fact um, yeah so I didn't like this f4 move because it just makes you less flexible And Sunderfrock is, is saying four versus three on one side gives good, huge drawing chances. I wouldn't say huge, but gives pretty good drawing chance in general. So maybe not even knight d4 because I'm not sure uh, how good your chances are in the um, bishop endgame. So what else can you do here? Hmm. Yeah, not that easy. I was thinking about g4 maybe, but black probably just goes f5 still. And won't be easy task because, yeah, the black pieces are well placed here. Um, so I'm not sure if that helps much. I mean, also e4 here, you could think about taking with the king to have a pass pawn at least. Um, yeah, this looks like a good option, in fact. I, I do like this. Um, let's say king e6, because f5, probably king d5 is possible, so king e6. And now. Black wants to go f5, but here I think this this bishop endgame might give some better chance again to win. Because you can go d4, d5. I'm not sure if it's winning, but I think you have good chances. Yeah, I think you have... It's, it's always tricky, those, those endgames. But I think you have some chances here. Right, it just makes some moves. Whatever. Alright, so d5, black cannot stop. Um, 
But then the question is, can I make any progress from here? And maybe I can't. Yeah, maybe I can't, yeah. Yeah, not easy, not easy. Those end games, not easy. Um, so then my best bet would be to not go e4 at all. Uh, but play slowly somehow, maybe. I think you can do this and fix the pawn on h7 and maybe even push this pawn forward to h6 to just have some additional options in the future. Maybe bring a knight to f6 at some point. But just having a target here just gives some more um, tactical ideas. And this is, this is nice. So h4, h5 at some point, of course, you want to make sure black cannot take. And then you can also play e3, bring the king over. Um, and I think it will be more of a slow game. Um, where you still have good chance and you want to avoid exchanging knights. Yeah, I think that would be the best strategy here. So you made it more difficult on yourself, I believe, by playing f4 uh, earlier. All right, let's see how this continues. Uh, D takes e4, bishop c7, h3. Um, Yeah, I'm guessing the problem with g4 here is that black can go g5. And then take the pawn on h2. Yeah, so that's why I think you played h3. But now black achieves this, this perfect defensive structure. So for all of you guys, Jan, this is the structure you want to have if you're defending, if you're a pawn down, because now white always needs to exchange uh, pawns to get something going, right? And um, yeah, every pawn exchange helps the defender. So g4. Yeah, takes, takes. Bishop b6. Why is this pawn always? All right. All right, so you play g5. e5 looks more natural to me, honestly. e5 followed by king e4 and f5, something like that. Honestly, I don't know if you still have any chances. I mean, some chance, certainly, but not that many anymore. But this just seems more natural to me to go e5, put a king on e4, go f5, and then get your piece into some better squares and then you can still set some traps and maybe win. So g5, king e6, all right, king g4, so it's, it's similar. But the thing is with the king on g4, here what I liked, um, with going e5, now let's say king e6, king e4, that you're also approaching, I don't know, this knight on c6, it's just bothering me because it's quite well placed, feels like to me. Uh, whereas with the king on g4, of course, you're far away from attacking any pieces here. I don't know if it makes a big difference, but just it feels more natural to, to go e5, king e4. Bishop e3, bishop d2, bishop b6, f5 check and you're asking why does f5 give away my adventure according to engine well in this position i wouldn't look at the engine anyway because uh, if it's about where you gave away your advantage i think it was like a incremental process over time um, but i don't think it was here by playing f5 because this is really the only try you can make i mean we can argue about whether you first should improve your pos position or your piece a little bit better um, a little bit more, but you gave away the advantage, the main part of your advantage earlier. 
and we talked about it. So g f5 takes takes king e7, bishop f4, king f8, f6. All right. I played f6 to not allow the king to move. Knight d8, king f5, knight king g8, and now you play g6. Well, if you play g6, then it's just it's just a draw pretty much immediately, right? And then, well, black has achieved what he wanted, right? Exchange all the pawns he had. And now this extra pawn doesn't really matter because black can just sacrifice the knight, uh, the, the bishop or the knight against it, and it's a draw. Uh, so what you need to do if you still want to play on for a little bit at least, still have maybe some tricks somewhere, I don't know, then you got to bring your knight over and I don't know what exactly you're going to try, but maybe somehow, somewhere uh, you can still do something. But really, it's, it's going to be tough. Let's say 96, yeah. Well, knight in games still could hold, I think, good potential to win. Um, but of course, black doesn't have to do that. Yeah, and then you just, you just play a little bit on. Put the knight on e5, something like that. You can just make some more moves, why not, right? Uh, with g6, you make it easy for your opponent. He doesn't have to think anymore. He just gives his minor piece for the pawn and that's it. And hello to O Sicilian and thanks to Patrick for the compliment. Blitz setting is saying f6 doesn't look promising to me. Um, yeah. Of course, white doesn't have to go f6 here, but then the question is also what else is white going to do? Um, and maybe bishop d6 check, king f4. Yeah, you can try all these things, but yeah, I'm pretty sure this this is a draw. Uh, it's just not enough winning potential on the board. So I think to, to summarize, I think... Uh, one big takeaway is here, work on your time management. Maybe also a psychological opponent that your opponent was, psychological component that your opponent was uh, higher rated and maybe that costs you to spend more time. I don't know. I don't know what uh, your time situation is in other games, but here it certainly costs you half a point. It feels like to me because let's be honest, if you have some more time and you don't need much uh, in this position, you just figure this out, you look at bishop b4, bishop c3, bishop c7, then you just went in. Bishop b4 seemed to be the easiest way and seemed by force uh, win a second pawn and just sit, right? So this is where uh, you could have made your life easiest. And then in the end game, now this big takeaway, what I talked about many times, is don't exchange pawns. Um, this is how your pawn drew the game, right? And also be careful of pawn moves because you cannot take them back. So this pawn move f4 also criticized a little bit. All right. Thanks for sending it in, Corsu. And I hope this advice was helpful. All right, Miktal, here we go. Let me first set off, uh, turn off the engine. And then go through the game. That was the game MGTOW against King's Crusher, played in one of the Banter Blitz sessions here by King's Crusher, who is a famous YouTuber. He has like, I don't know, many, many subscribers. 50,000, more even, a lot. And he's doing some Banter Blitz on Chess 24 and Mick played against them. And it's the... All right, so this may be the first uh, point Knight f3 is not, well, of course you can do that, um, but yeah, d5 is, would be another move to consider. Of course, it's allowing the Volga gambit here, or the Banking gambit rather, um, but 
that would be I think the more uh, critical try because knight f3 okay now we have this variation which is uh, also very well known here e6 is what I like to play there's a bunch of variations um, but King's Russia goes to g6 now I'm not very familiar with this line um, knight takes uh, g6 um, so I cannot really say much about the opening here knight takes c6 looks a little bit curious to me though uh, but maybe you know more about than I do. Let's uh, consult the opening tree, and the opening tree is agreeing. Knight takes c6 is not a very often played move. e4 is by far the main move. And in fact, now that I'm looking at it, this is transposing to the accelerate dragon. Look at that, and I'm familiar with this again. So this is what you could do. 80,000 subscribers, King's Crusher. Wow, that's just... Mind blown, but he also has like 10,000 videos, just incredible. Um, so this would be a principled move here to go for his Morochi bind and Mick, you can if you want to check my series out uh, against the Sicilian. This transposes to obviously a variation from the Sicilian uh, where I cover this. Um, it's uh, yeah, my repertoire against the Sicilian and German. And there, the Marocci video. So knight takes c6, yeah, doesn't help you a lot. It just helps black, gives black more um, strength in the center. Now bishop g5, bishop g7. Yeah, another rule of thumb really is, in general, you want to develop your king side first, because in most cases you're going to castle king side. And just king safety is huge. You want to get your king out of the center as soon as possible, so you don't have to worry about it. Right. So bishop g5, you can do that, but you still need some time to develop your king side. So just as a general thing, I noticed here. Um, all right, castle, bishop e2, rook b8, rook b1, bishop a6, castle, queen a5, bishop f4. Mm, e5. Yeah, I think you could have also just kept your bishop on, on uh, this diagonal. Yeah, because, well, after bishop of 4 you're just being hit by e5. So, what's not, I don't think it's necessary to give uh, black this tempo. Unless you have something else here. Can you go b4? That's probably not great. It's a common motive though, just to to keep in mind. But here, yeah, I don't think I like it much. Um, probably black can just take on c4. No, there's queen d4 here, hitting both f6 and c4. But let's say black plays a normal move. Uh, like rook e8 yeah eh. maybe i mean even here queen d4 would be possible one can look at it at least um so I'm not sure but just as an option For white. All right, you went back. We should g3, rook f8. Now h3. Yeah, I'm not sure what you have really in mind with this move h3. Um, I mean, another move. It's, it would be about time to move to queen either to c2 or to d2. So then you also need to consider what is black going to do next. And black certainly wants to go d5. Well, maybe wants to go d5. Um, so that's why I would maybe not play queen c2. That would allow d5. But here after queen d2, uh, actually black can also go d5. 
in fact, because here after c takes, black can take on e2 and then take back. That's a nice center for black. Mm. So considering that we want to somehow stop d5. What about the move queen to d6? That looks like a good move. Uh, stopping d5, obviously. Um, black cannot really get rid of this queen. Rook e6 doesn't work. This rook is hanging. Bishop f8 doesn't work. This knight is hanging. Um, so this looks like a great move. Queen d6. Because, well, it stops d5. And you can go rook fd1 next. You're, the queen is very active here and cannot be pushed away right now. Um, Also, you might have this idea of going b4. So a lot of advantage to, advantages to this move. So h3 was just, okay, h3 is a useful move uh, in general to make because, okay, you're giving space to your king. But here just didn't feel um, the right moment. And I think black could have gone d5 now, but he did not. Um, he went rook bd8. And now queen d6, probably black could hit the queen of rook e6. Blitz stating is saying rook takes b2. Yeah, I was looking at that blitz stating. Um, but I don't think it's enough compensation for, for black here. Let's say move like queen d2. It's just a pawn for the exchange. Of course, you do have some play, but no, it's not enough. White is better here. So here after queen d6, just rook e6 pushing the queen away mm, would probably not do much for white. You played queen c2 now, okay. I'm still waiting for him to go d5, but he is not doing it. Actually, another move here is b4. And actually, I really like this move. I'll tell you why. Because now you push the queen away, obviously. Queen has to go somewhere. Um, let's say c7. Now you can go c5. And you once again stop d5 or you exacerbate it. And uh, black cannot play it under the same circumstance. Now you also improve your queen position. You can go rook d1 next. And this is once again a nice position. Probably black needs to go still d5. But now you take en passant. And um, you have some nice play here against the weaknesses. Uh, rook d1 simply and just a slight edge for, for white. Miktal says, yeah, he was afraid of that. B4 looked good because the rook moved away from the b-file, so b4 was possible. All right, but we also have to keep in mind, of course, it's a blitz game, so moves are played rather quickly and a lot of mistakes are made. Now, queen c7. Uh, yeah, here d5, once again, I would say um, would be good. Um, here you could go c5, I think. Uh, still, even without b4, still stopping any d5. But you went rook fd1. Okay, now d5 would probably not be as great anymore for black because after take, bishop takes e2, knight takes e2, black would love to take with the a C pawn but cannot because of the pin. So that would once again leave him with a weakened pawn structure. Pawns on C6 and an A7 and uh, white is better. Junior chess team is asking, how can I send you a game to analyze? You need to go to the feature on the top, learn, then database analysis and coaching. There you need to import the game and then share it with me. There's a... Um, you can share with me by either sending the link or if we're friends, then you can also invite me to the game. It doesn't really matter. And you share the game or you share the link with me by sending me a personal message. Um, yeah. So I think you can figure this out, but also there's a video in which I'll explain how to do it. If you just search premium coaching here on Chess24, the news article should pop up where we first announce the show and there's, uh, there's a written instruction as well as a video where I show how you can do it. All right, let's get back to the game. Um, 
So d5 maybe not the best choice, but we're looking for white here anyway. So d6 was played. Now b3. Yeah, it seems like you're playing very carefully and you don't need to play that carefully. I think you could go b4 here. Uh, why not? Push those, those pawns. Push them. b4, a4, maybe go b5, maybe you have the option of going c5 in the future. This, this is too careful play here, I would say. Bishop c8, bishop f3, bishop f5. All right, so you play knight e4. I mean, just instinctively, that just doesn't feel right to me to go into a pin. Uh, of course, you can do that, but I wouldn't like to do it. You can just go e4. Uh, of course, you want to provoke that, but this weakness, this d4 square, is not a big problem right now since the knight is far away from the pawn. And here, um, you could think about this as a follow-up. This actually looks interesting. Um, black doesn't really want to take because knight e4, you win this pawn back quickly. And if d5, then you can take. If pawn takes, there's knight b5, knight coming to d6. This looks pretty good. Um, but knight takes might be a little bit annoying. But also here, knight e4 intending to go to d6. Of course, it's very concrete. Not sure exactly how well it works, but looks good to me right now. So I think that was an interesting option. But just instinctively, don't put your pieces into pins like that. Could very well turn out badly. Uh, I mean, if he goes a move like king h8 here, let's say, just to not um, give you the option to unpin with check, then how are you getting out of this pin, right? I mean, it's not a big problem as of yet, but could be in the future. Of course, you can do a counter pin like bishop h4. And okay, you're not going to lose a piece, but just in general, yeah, uh, be careful of putting a piece in pins. K Storn Ken says, can you please accept my friend request so I can send broadcast the game to you? You, we don't need to be friends, uh, but I'm of course very willing to accept your request, just accept it. Um, you can also share the link with me by uh, just copy, copy, paste, and then send a personal mes message to me. But now, since we're friends, you can also just yeah, invite me. All right, so h6, knight takes f6, bishop takes, bishop e4. Um, yeah, also here, e4 is perfectly fine. Uh, you don't need to go bishop e4. But then again, bishop e4 looks also fine, bishop e6, rook d2, doubling on the d file. The bishop, I don't know about the bishop. It's looking a little bit misplaced right now. Rook d1, rook d7, and now rook d3, and you're running right into f5. Right into it. Yeah, so you need to be careful, of course. Th this move was in the air already for a longer time. And um, yeah. Rook d3 and f5 and you resigned, but I know you told me that there was a safe here and you want me to find it. So let me see and if I can find the safe. Well, just bishop f3 back, right? Don't resign too early. Bishop f3 back, e4 and just take on d6. That's all good. It's all good if black takes on f3, this rook takes d7. Uh, double attack on the queen and if rook takes c6 now you even have a choice between rook takes c6 or if you want to play it safe bishop takes c6 if you want to play it simple rather hitting the queen and then after the queen moves just move the bishop back and you're up a pawn so don't resign too early especially in blitz games or well anywhere really i mean some positions need to be resigned but here bishop f3 yeah Black probably will go rook bd8 and black is more comfortable threatening e4 now having more space but the game is far from over. I mean you can just move the rook back to d2 and um, yeah this, this seems still pretty close to equality to me. So I think general takeaway well it's a blitz game right so cannot make like huge 
conclusions, but I think you were a little bit too cautious in this game. And um, you had several opportunities where you could uh, gain some more space. And um, also it feels like play a little bit against your opponent's ideas. We saw that several times to stop d5, which he actually never did, right? But I thought he could have played it and I thought it was very possible for him to do it. Um, but to look, and that, that's for all of you watching, look at what your opponent wants to do next and then what can you do to stop it or make it more difficult for him. Um, that's just a very useful technique, especially, yeah, for everybody starting out. Um, just ask yourself, what is my opponent threatening? What, what does my opponent want to do next? And that's just a good way to, to pay attention and not only focus on the own plans and the own threats that you want to set, but also focus on what your opponent is up to. All right, thanks to Mick for sending it in and let's go to the next game by Pramod. And Pramod also played a blitz game on chess 24 and sent it in. So let's see. He was white. And it is a Royal Lopez. B5, Bishop B3. B5 was played early by Black, but I don't know what the refutation, refutation is there. Is there one? Knight of six. Yeah, the refutation is knight g5. Um, Knight g4 was played in the hope of an attack someone to fried liver, but I felt after d5 black can equalize easily. No, I don't think so. Um, I think that here black's in some trouble. d5, e takes d5, knight takes d5. So now you're saying I felt knight takes f7 was wrong, so I played the typical move knight takes f7. So probably you meant something else uh, first. But here, okay, let's see. I mean, this looks pretty bad for for black. What, what, does, what does black do if they move like queen f3? Junior chess team and, and K Storm, you both put the link here in the in the chat, which is fine, but I don't think I'll get to your games today. So please send it to me as a personal message. That would be great. And then I'll cover it in another show. I'll have another one on Friday and most likely again on Monday, uh, next Monday, because I want to do some more be before the Olympiad starts. Uh, since then, I'm going to be busy and I'm not sure if I can do any more after Olympiad is over. So send them to me um, through personal message. And of course, make sure the links work. All right, so here queen f3 looks very strong, hitting d5, hitting f7. What is black going to do? Of course, you can take on g5, but there's just another double attack now, and it's just game over. Uh, the knight cannot be protected. Um, is, is there anything black can do here? I mean, this is a checkmate threat. This just seems winning on the spot, honestly. So what's the takeaway here? Why not knight d4 instead of knight takes d5? Carlson two asks. Yeah, I mean, black needs to play differently, obviously, but we're looking at this for the white side because this is the player who sent it in, Pramod, and we uh, only focus on the white side, really, because I want to give him some tips. Right, but yeah, this knight takes d5 just seems to be losing on the spot here to queen f3. Um, so what's the takeaway? Look at your options. Knight takes f7 might be tempting, right? And you knew this idea from the, um, what you said, fried liver, which is similar. I haven't even heard this name before, but I'm just trusting you on that and that you're not clowning me here, uh, fried liver, um, which is similar variation and then you, you knew this is the best move, but always focus on the present position and look at the best moves there. And then you probably easily spot queen f3 is just, just winning right away. So knight takes f7, king takes, queen f3 check, king e6, knight c3, and knight e7. And d4, yeah, I like d4. This is also, I think, 
typical approach in this other variation, which is similar. I'm not sure about whether to castle earlier play d4, but fellows the king in the middle, he can't capture the knight on c3. I saw this move d4 in analysis of the game of Kamsky on chess 24, but it was in a fried liver attack. I felt the motive should be similar. Yeah, that's what I just said, and probably you're right. Mm. So that's fine, I think. c6, castle. And self castle, how could I have improved my attack? Um. I don't know, I think castle is the best way to improve your attack. You gotta get the rooks into a game on the e-file and that looks totally fine for me. Really difficult position to play for black in a blitz game. Queen c7, rook e1, king d7. I can certainly knight takes d5, take, rook takes e5, um, bishop b7, but couldn't come up with a plan on how to continue the attack. How to keep the initiative, so to decide to keep the knights. I mean, taking on d5 looks quite tempting because here you can also take with the bishop. Point being the black cannot take back because of check and yeah. The rook on a8 is hanging, so this is winning. If black cannot take, he needs to go something like rook b8 or rook a7. I'd say rook a7, but I think both are just bad. d takes e5, you play bishop e3, there's e6, bishop f4, rook comes to d1. This just looks completely busted for black, really. So I think this was a very nice way to go here. Just open up some more files, also pick some pawns up in the process because, well, you're piece down, so you might as well grab some pawns. And here after knight takes d5, takes, takes, takes. Um, yes, the knight c6 maybe. But also just d takes e5, there's e6, uh, queen f7 ideas. Um, you already have three pawns, your attack's continuing. This is very, very good for white. So just consider, once again, can it moves, right? Consider all the moves in position, especially consider taking moves and chess moves first. Um, because they're, they usually lead to forcing variations and it's easier to calculate them. And here, you can just say, okay, I win a pawn, but I cannot take on d5 again. I open some, I win another pawn, open up some more files, and you can just stop. All right, knight e4, king d8. Because now it's easier, this knight on d5, after all, it's blocking the d file, so it's not easy to get through. Uh, I, was about, I was going to say, it's more difficult to get through because of this knight on d5. Bishop g5. I felt knight g5 was better after I played the move bishop g5. Was there another move to consider? Yeah, knight g5 looks great. I mean, going for f7 once again. <laughs> not the second knight is going for f7. Yeah, what is black going to do to stop it? Uh, not much. Yeah. Uh, so this was a great chance. Yeah, knight g5. Um, all right, bishop g5. h6. Bishop h4, g5, all right, bishop g3, bishop g7, all right, d takes e5. I felt that after bishop takes e5, I could have had more options with so many pins. Okay, d takes e5 looks fine to me. Uh, I was also looking at queen f7, which is a very tempting move. Bring the queen in, hit g7. Probably black has to go rook g8, because knight f5, just bishop takes d5. Um, so rook g8. Uh, now, I mean, this looks great. Uh, I cannot say exactly what to do next, but this looks great. <laughs> Maybe just a move like rook g1. Bring all the pieces uh, into the attack. My, my coach used to say all pieces want to be invited to the party. And the party is here uh, <laughs> mating the black king. So rook d1 here. Or maybe now taking on e5. Queen f7 also just looks like a strong move. But also d takes e5 looks good. And ambitious pawn is also bring the rook to d1. Yeah, at some point, certainly, why not? In the analysis, I came to know that I missed knight takes g5, but when should I consider captures like them? Always, always consider captures, especially if you see there is this discovered attack. You see the knight just has to move anywhere on the board and you will attack the bishop on g e5. And then you just want to find the most impactful attack or move. 
or discovered attack, right? Knight check g5, hitting e5, and then also threatening knight f7. Just went. All right. So you took. Now knight takes g5 is not possible anymore because the queen can take. And you don't have other nice discovered attacks, it seems. Rook 81, I couldn't see any reasonable move with discovered attack on the queen, so I decided to de develop my rook to the center. Yeah. It seems like it has already become more difficult for you to break through here. Queen f4, queen d3 was played to avoid queen exchange, but queen c3 was better according to engines. Uh, but I don't know why. Well, uh, well, you hit the rook, of course, and I guess here you can play on the light squares, like queen c5 maybe, a queen g7 maybe, but the position is not easy to to win anymore um, your position was of course much more overwhelming earlier so but okay queen d3 also looks sensible to me rook f8 i could have played c4 right away but i want to cover my i want to protect my king but what's this the best way for white to continue your king is safe right now you have the knight on e4 covering f2 and f3 is also creating some weaknesses on its own for example this Diagonal uh, becomes weaker, a7, g1, and yeah, if you don't have to do it, then don't do it. You can also always do it later, and really in positions where you have sacrificed material, it's about initiative and playing quickly, and you don't want black to give, you don't want your opponent to give um, much more time to, to consolidate, because eventually, yeah, black will put his king into a safe position, then might be too late. So c4 here right away looks good to me, yeah f3, bishop e6, now c4. I mean, here, once again, you can also think about discovered attacks. Knight c5, knight takes g5, the bishop is hanging on e6. And that's, in general, it's a good uh, thing to watch out for. Hanging pieces are tactical targets. Um, I'm not sure how good knight takes g5 is, but certainly something to consider. So c4 takes, queen takes, I wasn't sure about bishop takes or queen takes, but I felt I could invade with the queens under dark squares, and I absolutely agree. That's nice, queen c5 might come, and so on, king c7, and now queen c5, and here my opponent blunder bishop f5, when you can just take on d5, yeah? Mm -hmm. Takes, 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 and you one back to peace, and bishop takes e4, and queen e7 and win on time. Yeah, I don't know if queen e7 is doing much. It's of course not hurting either. Uh, but if the king b6, you would probably. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. Queen c5. I think here just taking back with the rook is easiest. You're covering c1 and then you play rook e7 next and then you win. I managed to win on time, although my position was winning too. Nicholas, will you please tell me where I can improve my game and some advice on where to study model strategies and plans on Roy Lopez? I studied critical opening theory from Peters and Jan series, but I want to learn a middle game strategy. Thank you and I'll send you many more in the future. Cheers. Yeah, first of all, thanks for sending this game in. Many questions. Um, how to improve your game, look for more alternatives and also study some tactics or do some tactic exercise. I think that could have helped you a lot. But what I saw here several times was that you didn't consider all the moves. I mean, if you just play queen f3 here early on, uh, right here, your opponent can just resign immediately and the game is over, right? So this can be very helpful. Uh, there's this Lasker quote. If you see a good move, look for a better one. I, I like to, I like to um, point it out quite often. And it's true. Uh, don't be satisfied with one good move, but look for better ones. It will make your life easier and you might not spend that much time. Sometimes just scanning the position a little bit, just evaluating your different options and this will already help. In terms of 
middle game strategy for Roy Lopez. Um, not sure what to tell you. We don't have a series on that on Chess24 as of yet. I could imagine that Jan and Peter do give some advice in terms of plans and where to put the pieces. Um, but then you probably need to check out some books. But um, there's no book coming to mind to, you, to me right now, which I can recommend to you. So you just got to do some search on your own. Um, so anything else you wanted to know? Yeah. The Roy Lopez, I mean, it is a very, very rich, complex, strategic opening. So there's a lot to learn. Um, yeah, I would just recommend a book, a uh, good book, but I cannot point one out to you right now. Um, all right. We go to the next game. Blitzdating is asking if it is his lucky day today. Not sure, Blitzdating. I have another game here by Sander Farkas. Um, and yeah, we'll see how long this will take. And then, but also Jan wants to get into the studio because he's doing his show at 8 p.m. tonight. The opening clinic. I'll say this one more time because Maybe the water was too loud. Jan is doing his show at 8 p.m. Uh, the opening clinic. And then also we have a German show at 8.15 by Melanie and Nicolas Lobbe in German at 8.15. So plenty, plenty of shows today. And Tweedledee is saying he, looked, he learned a lot uh, in the Royal Lopez by looking at Fisher's and Kasparov's games. Yeah, that's a good good strategy. Um, look at what the, the best did, right? So that might help as well. All right, let's get to Sandor Farkas' game here. Um, he was playing with the black pieces. So let's flip the board. And let's go. This is a game against Grandmaster Michael Ivanov. Tournament game. I might have played against this guy already as well, but there's so many Ivanovs out there, so I don't really know. G6, knight bd2, bishop g7. Yeah, I mean, you can allow e4 here, but you can also stop with d5. Why not? And this is not... Uh, let me turn off the engine real quick. This is not... Um, yeah, very critical approach against the the whatever you're playing king's indian or greenfeld knight bd2 so just stop e4 don't give white the center here no need castle bishop d3 okay i understand you maybe like to play those positions uh like king's indian style kind of but white hasn't played c4 and white just has a nice center here so i wouldn't give this to white necessarily all right, castle, c5, take c5, take c5. Hmm. I think you could have pre prepared c5 first, maybe, with knight bd7. Well, then there's also e5. Okay, let's see how this turns out, because, yeah, here, white gets e5 in immediately. You were considering knight d5 and knight g4. I think knight d5 is better because after knight g4, white just plays queen e2, protects the pawn. And yeah, the knight could be out of place here. Would need to work out directly that you hit this pawn so many times that you win it. It might actually work. Let's say knight c6. Uh... Knight c4 what is what is white doing here probably not c4 but now you can already think about b5 this looks good now you're going to win this pawn on 
on e5, bishop e4, just bishop b7, for example. And yeah, white doesn't want to exchange the bishop here on c6. You're, you're saying you considered a move d5 when you prepared, but you didn't want to risk. Well, I feel like you're risking more here if you just give up more space. Um, knight g4 is computer's first move after analysis. Yeah, but if, if white cannot really keep this pawn e5, then that's great news. So that's, of course, something you have to calculate uh, carefully. Uh, maybe white plays knight c4 here immediately. Because now b5 wouldn't work because of bishop e4 uh, hitting the rook. Um, so probably now knight c6 and now bishop f4, something along these lines. But yeah, this has to be just checked carefully if it works or not. So knight d5, all right. Also a sensible move. Now knight c6, knight takes c5, okay, knight takes e5, bishop e4. Yeah, I mean this. So of course, nice to get this central pawn on e5. Now you played e6. All right. Bishop takes. Pawn takes. I think you can also consider queen takes here, honestly. I would not be afraid of this end game because you have the bishop pair. Yeah, sure, you have an isolated pawn, but I don't think it matters much at all, really. Um, this looks completely fine for, for black. I don't even know what white is doing here. Knight d4 maybe? But now b6. Knight b3, you can put your knight on c4 here. Now this is looking great. And if white takes, bishop takes. Um, yeah, this just looks completely fine. If rook d1, then b6, knight b3, and just bishop b7. Yeah, I mean, this is just, just equal, I would say. Okay. Oh, Pramod pointed out a good good thing uh, in this game of the queen of three, bishop e6 is possible. Now I have to, uh, yeah, now I feel a little bit stupid because this is an obvious move to stop both threats. But it's, of course, also much better for white. So knight takes f7 was a good move then in that case, yeah. Um, all right, let's get back to this game. So queen takes d5 looks also very nice, but okay, maybe also a matter of style. Knight takes, bishop takes, knight d3, bishop drops back, bishop f4, bishop f5, rook b1, rook c8. All right, rook c8, rook queen d2. Bishop takes d3. I took on d3 because I started to be afraid that his knight on d3 will be better than my bishop. So I exchanged and pushed d4 after that. I had a pretty good feeling. Yeah, I mean, that's possible. But mm, I don't think you have to be afraid about this knight. Honestly, I mean, what is it going to do, right? You, you're having some pressure on these pawns already. And I think you're in a very nice spot here. So I think bishop dx d3 wasn't necessary. And you give away some of the advantage you have here. I would say you're, you're better here. Uh, That's my feeling. Those bishops are really nice. Just have to make sure white cannot exchange them somehow. Um, so let's see. I mean, rook e8 would be, of course, the most natural move. Put in the rook on the open e file. Let's see if white can do the same. Or if he's already in trouble here. Now you can still consider bishop takes d3, for example. And if queen takes, then 
or even better, take on b2 immediately. If it works, right? So uh, white cannot take back because of checkmate. And if queen takes d5, rook takes c2, queen takes b7, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, this doesn't seem to be too much, unfortunately, unless there's bishop d4 here, which could be strong. I mean, this has to be, of course, very carefully evaluated. Uh, but uh, this looks good, in fact. This looks pretty good, in fact. But um, also, you could go for uh, taking on e1 first. I didn't want to give white the e-file, but yeah, this is also a pawn, looks like. Uh, but yeah, this all needs to be checked. I mean, this also might still continue rook b1, maybe it's queen f6 and so on and so forth. But just feels good. And if uh, pawn takes, yeah, now I think you're also in a good spot here. Oh, Kramnik student is pointing out that I, yeah, missed something. Yeah, you guys are right. Uh, yeah, I missed queen of one. So if we go back to this here, black cannot play this move because, yeah, there's no checkmate since queen of one. So you need to, you, need, you would need to um, go rookie one first and then takes on b2, which looks good. Um, but okay, c takes d3 is possible, but here you're just more comfortable. It's a queen f6 or something like that. Better bishop. It's not much, but it's a nice position without any risk to play, really. So, okay, bishop takes d3 is possible, but just doesn't feel feel that great to me. But even here, yeah, you can put the queen on d5, also looks nice. Uh, rook d1, queen a5, okay, okay. Yeah, uh, instinctively I would put the queen on d5, but yeah, maybe there's not much to do here, but just feels feels better. Maybe queen c4 here. Because white cannot take, because rook takes, now this is hanging, and I also have this idea of d3 uh, and hitting the bishop on f4. But probably rook d2. Yeah, it might be difficult to get something here. Of course, there are ideas like queen a2 maybe now. Um, feels like black has some pressure, but maybe it's not that much. But feels a little bit unpleasant for white, I have to be honest. There are some targets. It's easier to play for black, certainly. All right, you played queen a5. Yeah, would like queen d5 a little bit better, I have to say. I mean, you said the whole game was ground equality, but still there are some positions which are, you know, a tiny bit, maybe. A tiny bit for black. So you want to go for them to just, yeah, take your chances. Uh, a3, queen c5, rook d2, rook e8, h4, h5. g3 and b5 and you offer the draw and you were very happy when he accepted. Yeah, I mean, you're 500 points below him or so, I think, or 443. Uh, I can see that a draw against a grandmaster is a great result, but what I would like you to ask is, would you also offer a draw against an opponent of the same rating right here or against an opponent who's lower rated, right? 
Because after all, well, rating is rating, but um, the position also matters and you're just more comfortable here, certainly. Okay, it's not much. You're saying yourself it was pretty much very close to equality the whole game, but you're pressing here. You have something, right? You control the e-file. White is passively defending. You have to better bishop. There are a lot of factors in your favor here and you can further improve your position. Go a5, maybe go a4. And okay, maybe you might not win. Maybe you might even lose uh, because you blunder somewhere or whatever happens, who knows. But you learn much more from the game than taking this draw. Um, that's just my personal stance. I, I always like to fight and play positions out. Um, and it pays off in the long term. That's what I like to tell people. It just pays off because you get this additional experience. And you might lose some games on the way, uh, but you will win many more games later because you just get more experience. You maybe also get some more stamina if you play out a lot of games. And it's just this mindset to fight and just try. Just try, because after all, chess, it's it's a fun game, right? It's, we play it for fun, really. We don't play it for uh, money, hopefully, or rating. And sure, you, you get some rating points here with this draw, but in the end, you can't buy yourself anything from it. So um, my recommendation is play it for fun and just keep going and uh, see what happens. All right, but good game. I mean, I couldn't really tell you much. Obviously, it was not a long game. Um, you equalized pretty comfortably with black against the Grandmaster, so that's great. And then I think you made a good, a lot of good choices. Um, I'm not sure about this bishop takes d3, but also this position looks nice uh, for you. So I think it's a matter of taste, maybe. I probably would have kept my bishop. I love the bishop pair, but this is just different for everybody. So um, just up to you. But in general, what I would like to point out is that here the knight will not be stronger than the bishops, uh, certainly. Um, so that's fine. All right, so that concludes it and Blitz Day, yeah, I'm pretty sure your game will be up next um, in the next show on Friday. So I'll hopefully see you back then. Um, all right, so I hope you could take something away. Remember, if you would like to have your game covered here, of course, for one, you need to be premium. That's just the requirement to even send me the game, right? To use that feature, uh, which is a great feature also for training together uh, with somebody or showing, sharing games. Um, the analysis and database and coaching feature on Chess24. If you go to learn and then you'll find pretty quickly. So you need to be premium, you need to send me a game, obviously, through personal message or through direct invitation, but that's only possible if you're friends. And then I love, I love it when there are comments like by all those, uh, the, all the games that, I, that we saw today, they all include questions and thoughts during the game. And that's really helpful because it, uh, it also, for one, it shows me critical moments. And it also, I can answer those specific questions and go in detail there and give better advice, obviously. All right. So, I hope to see you soon again, probably on Friday, and to all of you, uh, good night, or good evening, rather, I should say. And then in half an hour uh, is the next show with Jan Gustafsson, opening clinic number 13, in which he will share his incredible, uh, huge knowledge of openings. So this is also something to consider to watch. All right, see you guys. Goodbye.